This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, Amos is putting tampons in engines? Well, that's where they go, right? And, I mean, if you're going to be a Ghostbuster, you got to have creative solutions. Uh, as long as Michael Myers isn't showing up to, to put me through a 30 and 30 challenge. I mean, NBA games are what they are, man. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 289 for Tuesday, the 23rd of November, 2021. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. That's Kent. Uh, is over there, over there on camera. But of course, as is usual, we don't matter because we have a guest tonight. Welcome, Dominic John, to the Ritual Misery Podcast. Hi. <laughs> oh. Glad to have you here. That's all all awesome. the hype and we get a subtle Glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Amos, Amos, I got to know about this thing, though. Engine tampon? What the hell okay. is an engine tampon? Now, I have two stories, one sun and one night. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll hold off on the engine tampon for now. We're going to start with the Michael Myers. <laughs> okay. All right. We are eating dinner. We're talking about movies. It's my son sitting across from me, and then my uh, t my oldest and my youngest daughter sitting in between us along the long edge of the table. And we're eating dinner, and I don't remember what we were having. It was something simple because I cooked it. And so spaghetti. I'm I'm pretty sure it's spaghetti. I think spaghetti might have too many ingredients for whatever it was we were eating that night. <laughs> frozen lasagna. Robin. Yeah. Yeah, frozen lasagna, Robin. still frozen, not even baked. It's just straight out of the freezer. We didn't even take it out of the box. We just chopped it and like cardboard's extra protein. <laughs> um, okay. So we're we're talking about movies and things like that, and it's, it's just a normal conversation, normal dinner conversation for us. And at one point, we start talking about Mike Myers. Amber, my oldest, hates Mike Myers. Can't stand him. Um, she had a bad experience with Cat in a Hat, gave her nightmares, and since then, just his voice just it triggers her, you know. Okay, so we're yeah, so we're talking about about uh, Saturday night, Saturday Night Live alum Mike Myers. Yes, uh, we're talking about Wayne oh. Wayne like is yes, in, in yes. Wayne's world. Uh, Amber okay. Amber and I are, and we're talking about him, and we're expressing. Uh, I enjoyed Wayne's world. I you know, this and that. David is just going along because the only Mike Myers that David knows is Michael Myers, ah, from the horror movies. Yeah. So he's dun, he's dun, sitting dun, there dun, thinking dun, maybe dun, he dun, just dun, missed dun, out. Dun. Yeah, he's he's thinking he just missed out on the horror version <laughs> of Cat in the Hat. Um, oh, oh, that would be a movie. Uh, I would I would pay money for that. Uh, Austin Powers, where he goes around slashing everybody. Like this is what's going on in his head. Is me and Am or is Amber and I are talking about all these Mike Myers movies. Yeah. Hey, I'm with David. Like, I want to see these movies. Let's go. Let's go. The moment of realization. Know, Cat in the Hat was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it yeah, did, it was pretty horrific on its own. It did yeah. not need a hockey mask. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the moment of realization when I realized he said something, something just kind of didn't match up. And I, it took a second and Amber was talking. I took a second and I, I like recalibrated my thinking. And when mm. I realized that David was talking about Michael Myers and we were talking about Mike Myers. The whole conversation opened up and I finally understood why David was having such a hard time imagining <laughs> these different movies. He's like, I've only ever seen the one Michael Myers movie. You know, <laughs> it was, it was, it was so good. It was so good. Even my eight year old who's only ever seen partial, you know, a couple parts of movies of the different two, uh, the two different genres. Right. Uh, she right, was laughing. Right. It was a good time had all around. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> I figured, okay. Well, you're making fun of Big Brother. I mean, that's always a good time. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Yeah. I mean, I would know being the only <laughs> child, but yeah, I can, I can, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Later on that night, David is in the garage working on the van. He's checking like the mass airflow sensor. He's uh, checking oil. We, we he cleaned out wow. the garage. He cleaned out the garage so he could park the van in there and actually work on it in the wintertime. He's, it's becoming his hobby to keep this this 18 year old van alive long enough to get him through high school so he can continue to drive for the next two years, you know? 
hey, that's that's valuable. Like teach that kid yeah. all that shit so well, that he can just be yeah. your living maintainer. I, yeah. He's yeah. learning it. I don't know shit about cars. I know about maintenance, but I don't know anything about cars specifically. So I'm giving him like best practices in general, but he's actually learning the, the van itself. That's you know? awesome. Yeah. Um yeah. He, uh, I go out there, and one thing that he had done is he disconnected the battery because he had to disconnect the radio, and he, you know he follows all the rules, and you know he's really by the book and stuff like that, and that's cool. And I'm standing off to the side because the garage door opener broke, so now we have to do it manually, and it doesn't quite mm. seal right because it's not properly weighted for a, a manual door. So the ground mm. is like freezing cold, and of course David's out there wearing my slippers, so I don't have slippers to wear into the garage because he's wearing my slippers. Okay, <laughs> so I'm standing off to the side a little bit. And we're talking about a few things, and then he told me the battery was sparking, so we had to get a little thing and, and, and put it in between the battery and the terminal so that, you know, it wouldn't spark anymore. Oh, a anymore. big screwdriver. You're talking about a big screwdriver. Uh, he thought about that, and then he remembered when we wired the shed not to do that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> oh, oh, that was nice. If you just heard a small explosion, that was Dominic's neck as, she, as they were uh, flexing. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) um those sorts of fireworks don't happen when i flex so so uh (laughs) so i look over and i look to see what he had used to jam in between the terminal and the battery stud and it was a small pink cylinder and i just assumed that it was a tampon he had gone into the bathroom which is right next to the garage gone under the under the counter grabbed a tampon Plastic and cotton are not conductive. Oh, that's a great damn idea. Maybe he found it in the van. Maybe one of the twins had left it in the van. Like, that's a great idea. I I'm, I dig it. That cool. Good on you. As we're talking <laughs> yeah. stuff like that, I go around to the other side of the vehicle and I start looking. And now I'm on the battery side of the car and I look down. It's not a tampon that we've been talking about for like ten minutes. It's a piece of ch- kids sidewalk chalk. Oh. It's the same color as the tampons the ladies in our house use. He just Damn. rolled with it, just like when he didn't know which Mike Myers we were talking about. He just rolled with it and let me think that it was a tampon. That's fantastic. So, so was he was he trolling was he trolling you or he didn't he didn't get the joke that he was telling? No, no the, the first time he was completely clueless. The second time he was letting me go with it. Got it. He was trolling you. I yeah. love it. I love it. So <laughs> yes. all in the same night, in like within a two hour time span, I had two very different uh miscommunications with my son about very different subjects, and he was on the opposite side of each one. So <laughs> that's that, fantastic. That in a nutshell has been how my life has gone since the last time we did a podcast. <laughs> I love it, man. That's 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 high quality entertainment. If you can have that yeah. daily, like that, there's worse <laughs> lives to, to live. Right, right, right. Usually, usually I'm just getting joshed on by my uh, by my nine year old. She just turned nine last week, and usually it's just her joking <laughs> on me about something. But no, no, now now now, totally. now my sixteen yeah. year old son's getting in on it too. So thanks, yeah, I appreciate that universe. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hey, so last night I I watched the new Ghostbusters movie, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, I'm not going to give any spoilers here. Uh, I'm just going to say that I do give it a thumbs up. I really enjoyed it. Uh, If I had to analogize it uh, with another movie, it's basically what The Force Awakens was to Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Ghostbusters Afterlife is to 1984's Ghostbuster. So that works. I I I liked that. I I really enjoyed The Force Awakens. So I yeah. So I, I really liked uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. So if you're a fan of the 1984 Ghostbusters movie, I give it a, a real high recommendation. Uh, definitely go see it. Uh, I do want to comment on one thing. It's not it's not a spoiler, uh, but it is it is a thing that was in the movie. There was a podcaster character uh, that is recommending his podcast to someone, and he says that it doesn't really uh, the podcast doesn't find its voice until episode 46. And that kind of became like a, a recurrent joke, like something that was revisited later. And it got me thinking, like, huh, because of my I went with both my sons uh, to see the movie. And mm-hmm. one of my boys, I don't remember which one, looked at me and was like, like, uh, so did Ritual Misery, like, find its voice at episode 46? I was like, well, <laughs> let me 
let me check because I'm not sure, right? And uh, so I went to DCTVpedia to look up our episode listing. Amos, do you know what episode 46 was of, of Ritual Misery? I know 42 was 101010, and we had a big thing about the meaning of, uh, you know, life and the universe. Life, and the universe, and everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 46, I do not. Was that like a, was that Charlie Fultz or something like that? Was that. Episode 46 was when we had Margaret Weiss. Oh, I should have remembered that. One of the like most prolific people that we have had. Actually, probably the most prolific person we've ever had on this show. Yeah. Uh, a, a hero of ours we were oh. able to interview. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> Author of like half of Amos's bookshelf. Um, nice. <laughs> like in that episode, that the interview that we did with Margaret Weiss was was absolutely like a, a change moment of our show. And uh, yeah, so I was like, yes. Yes, yeah. in fact, yeah. episode 46 <laughs> is when Ritual Misery found its voice. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Apparently. Uh, no, that, that, that tracks. That does track, yeah. Yeah. Uh, D- Dominic, what have, what have you had going on lately? Uh, um, okay, so um, finding... Oh, let's see. Um, there was a kink camp out in October. I am entering my community because it's like people are finally getting out. There's finally play parties and munches and everything mm-hmm. going on. Um, and then I'm getting dual licensed right now, which is always fun. Um, licensed esthetician, licensed cosmetic um, tattooing and oh. dating every, you know, body that I can. <laughs> so I don't know. Right on. Amos, uh, what's this thirty and thirty thing? Um, are are you trying to uh, you trying to get fit or what's going on? <laughs> Kent, everyone nope. in, everyone in Diamond <laughs> everyone in Diamond Club knows that uh, I eat happy. I'm not worried okay. about what goes in my mouth. I'm all I'm just as long as it tastes good and <laughs> fills me up. I'm down. Um, so no, it's Interesting. not, it's, it's not I'm, a fitness I'm challenge. How much, yeah. yeah. It, it, I'm, I'm wondering how much what you just said is going to lead into our later conversation, but I'll, I'll leave probably that all of it, all of it, <laughs> all of it, <laughs> uh, 30 and 30. So we have the streamathon coming up at the end of next month. It's a 27 hour live stream where we have a bunch of people team up together to do, uh, some charity work for extra life. Uh, therefore, um, Children's Miracle Network, and we raise money for the, for mm-hmm. them. It's kind of like a, a send off to the year and a happy New Year to the New Year. And during the entire thing, we have a live chat, and uh, we we focus on on having fun and making sure that we address uh, uh, mental health and making sure that no one has to spend New Year's Eve alone. It, it's kind of like this big thing that we, we we've been doing. This is our seventh one. It's phenomenal, and I don't mm-hmm. think enough people know about it. So mm-hmm. we should create more content related to it. However, I can only control myself. So I am proposing a 30 for 30 challenge. That means the 30 days of December leading up to the streamathon on New Year's Eve, I am going to produce content every single day. I am ah. not just going to produce the content, but I'm going to produce it and release it on that day. So it won't be stuff that I have canned from previous, no anything else. And it's going to range from from uh, uh, live streams, like video games, things like that. It could be a 15-minute podcast. It could be five pictures taken that day with a theme and released that day. Uh, it could be anything along those lines, but something that I'm already into, so it's not come too far out of my, out of my uh, comfort zone. The challenge mm-hmm. for me is the 30 pieces of content in 30 days. Um, a, a three minute TikTok would be excruciating for me, but I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> the best way that this is going to work is if people are listening to this podcast and they hear about the 30 for 30 challenge, they can pick my next, my next piece of media, whether it's photography, a 15 minute podcast, a three minute TikTok, an hour of streaming, they can pick it by donating to our streamathon link. I will take those donations. You can put a little comment in there. And um, yeah, 
it, it's uh, I, I will if you if you whoever has the most uh, most donation in there, I will do their selected piece of content. They can, you, you can even pick a theme. I will do that piece of content in, next, and then I will keep going down until there's no donations left for me to to reap in, and then I'll just start making stuff up off my head. And every day in December, I'm going to be releasing some sort of content. And I know I've said things like this before. This year, I'm actually serious about it. So if I don't do it, hop in the Discord and yell <laughs> at me because I'm in there every day for, for work. Um, yeah, 30 and 30 challenge. I'm going to create new content and release it day of that I create it every day in December. And you can control That's what that fantastic. content is going to be, the subjects, the type of content it will be by donating to our uh, Streamathon link, and that is um, extralife.org slash DC21. Nice. Or is it DC TV 21 I might have screwed that up. We'll get you that. I don't know. I threw, a, I, threw a, I threw a link in the Twitch <laughs> chat, so there that's not going to help the, the audio listeners, but um, but anybody in Twitch right now uh, can click on that. Or, or um, you can just go to dcstreamathon.org, and that'll route you to the appropriate page with the schedule and everything else on it. But that's what I'm going to do, 30, 30 pieces of content in 30 days. Uh, and you can so, pick, help pick that content by donating to the Extra Life campaign. So speaking of the New Year's Eve streamathon, uh, which is the culmination of the um, uh, Extra Life campaign that we do each year, uh, Kuhan, our quiz master, is going to be a participant mm -hmm. this year uh, once again, uh, presenting a pub quiz to everybody that that shows up to uh, to participate. And he is our guest quiz master tonight. Normally, we do Kent's game, where I put you through a uh, challenge of some through sort of various, torture. various uh, yeah, through various through levels torture. Of uh, but this week, Kuhan is going to join us and uh, put us both through the challenge. And he has been gracious enough to modify the quiz to allow for Dominic to participate. So we are going to have a, a three-way contest. Um, Love good three-way. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, I was waiting for a comment because <laughs> I was like, that's going to come into play l later in the conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, if we can get if we can get Kuhan on the call, uh, we're, I think we're ready for. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I think I'm here. Naim, what's up, my friend? I'm doing great. How is everyone doing? Awesome. Fantastic, great. man. I am excited <laughs> to be a participant in your quiz once again. It's been too long. So it has been too long. Yeah. The way this works out is anytime Kent's a participant in a quiz, it's because I made it and I'm not nearly as good as either one of you. So this is like the first time he's had a real <laughs> quiz thrown his way in forever. So he's it's the first time I've had to write trivia in a while because I haven't I haven't written since we stopped because uh, we we did uh, Speakeasy Pub Quiz through, basically through uh lockdown quarantine so starting in may of last year through july of this year we were doing speakeasy pub quiz every week uh which was really really fun uh but a lot of work uh, to write uh like 56 trivia questions or whatever we were writing every single week edit a video round edit an audio round edit a picture round so we're bringing something back in the in the not too distant future but uh but we are bringing speakeasy the that specific pub quiz uh style back for streamathon uh because we we love doing it so much last year and uh we're really glad to have the opportunity to do it again this year so fantastic right. what what uh, what, what kind of quiz do you have uh, for us tonight sir so i uh, <laughs> uh i asked uh you kent uh what uh what i should try to write around uh, and uh, and you said '80s, and you said no music, and I, I I respected your wishes. <laughs> I didn't I didn't do music. <laughs> he, but it he, is, uh, that, it is an '80s. That was a caveat quiz. he had to add because he knows I would cream him on music. We had to keep it sure. Yeah. fair. <laughs> it would fair be enough, it would be fair, utter yeah. destruction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get it. that. That's that's how it usually goes. That's how that's how most trivia teams are put together. Is somebody knows one subject really well, and especially for the quiz that we ran, uh, the music round was pretty important. It was a double point round, so you need a music person. And if one person's the music person, Amos, and the other person is not the music person, Kent, then you know that's that's not gonna. It works great as a team. Doesn't work great as a, as a one v one, or one v one v one as as it were. 
Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, so, what you got for us tonight? Why don't you let's go ahead and get this started and uh, see how embarrassed the three of us can be. <laughs> so do we have a, do we have some pen and paper real quick? Because I figure uh, we'll we'll show our answers so we're not uh, cheating off each other. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. It's the, it's the easy I think easiest way to to get it and keep it fair. Or yeah, if you want to just write it on your phone and keep it big, that that works great as well. That's perfect. As long as yep. as long as we can see it, I don't care. There we go. Awesome. Okay. I'm ready. Um, all right. So this quiz is called Some Number of Minutes to Midnight. Dust off your Walkman and grab your acid wash jeans because it's a 10 question quiz on pop culture of the 80s. Here is question number one. If my PowerPoint wants to work, there we go. The most perfect film of the 1980s was Back to the Future. While the film was famously directed by Robert Zemeckis, what St. Louis native co wrote the screenplay with Zemeckis? This is a toughie. Ooh. Ooh. This is going to be a toughie. Ooh. Right, Write down your answers, and then we'll, we'll see the answer in just a moment here. So once again, the most perfect film of the 80s was Back to the Future. While the film was famously directed by Robert Zemeckis, what St. Louis native co-wrote the screenplay with Zemeckis? All right. I've got a guess. I don't think I'm right, but I do have I, I do have a guess. I don't even have a guess. I'm not right. I, I'm, I'm, I don't even have let's, a guess. Let, let's see some answers. Let's see them. Chris Columbus, John Hughes. Yeah, yeah, we yep, can. I see it. It looks perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Amos those, didn't write anything. Those are both better answers than the nothing I had. So <laughs> they're, they're, they're good guesses. They're good guesses. That is Bob Gale. Uh, I had to. I had to kick it off with a St. Louis themed question. My hometown. Uh, Love St. Louis. So I'm wearing my St. Louis Cardinals hat. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't put. I almost put a baseball question in here, and I didn't. Uh, I see some people in the chat talking about uh, my my propensity to write baseball questions. Didn't yeah. do it to, to, to be nice to y'all. That, that, <laughs> that, that one yeah. would have been all Kent because I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have Amos I told you lately how much I hate baseball? baseball. <laughs> I, I really hate Not baseball. Not lately, but but um, you're doing it now. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I, pretty much, I pretty much play one video game uh, and it's MLB The Show. That's pretty much all that oh ever is, is in my PS4 at one time. Uh, so that's just that's 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 life. Uh, all right. This next yeah. one is. Uh, uh, I was I was watching the stream. I think Kent might have a bit of an edge here. Um, oh. Ghostbusters Afterlife ah. is in theaters now. Ghostbusters, please sponsor us. And features Carrie Coon, <laughs> Finn Wolfhard, and McKenna Grace as the family of which Ghostbuster who appears only in archival footage? Mm. Yes. Oh. So once again, question to here: Ghostbusters Afterlife in theaters now. Ghostbusters, please sponsor the show. Uh, features Carrie Coon, Finn Wolfhard, and McKenna Grace of the family of which Ghostbuster who appears only in archival footage? I think this is gettable. And if you haven't seen the film, which I also haven't, okay. I was going to see it last weekend, didn't have time. I'm, I'm, but, uh, I'm, I, I, I have my answer on this one. I actually have have an answer. It's a pure whim, but I think I'll go with it. Okay. All right. Let's reveal answers in three, two, one. <laughs> uh, the correct answer was indeed Egon Spengler, played by Harold Ramis. Oh I would have taken Harold Ramis just to be nice, but uh, yes, Egon. Uh, Harold Ramis passed away a few years ago, so yep. his character only appears in archival footage uh, in the film. Dang, it was not Ted. As it I was know. not Ted. Yeah. Ted, Ted is, listen, Ted, Ted the, was actually the lesser from, uh, known nickname of Egon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ted. Egon, it's, it's, Ted it's, Spengler. I, I, Egon Ted I Spengler. About like That's 80s what it is. Name. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Hey, that was a great guess. A for Peter or Logan, or Ted Logan. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. Here's question number three. I see people in the chat uh, saying these questions are super difficult. This is this is how I do trivia. These are the these are the kind of questions y'all know. These are the kind of questions that I write. This is this is a, this is a classic speakeasy round. So um, my, my friends right. are dying because I've never seen any movies at all. If they say so. <laughs> You should check out Ghostbusters. It's a good deal. It's a good flick. Good flick. Yeah. I, I heard there's Absolutely. a new one out. You, should, you can go catch. I, yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> also as I said, I, don't know. I have to check. As I said a moment ago, Back to the Future, the most perfect film of the 80s. Uh, I, it's great. I, I own. I own. Uh, of, uh, not possibly, even of the 80s, like yeah. possibly of all time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I own, I own uh, Back to the Future on Blu ray like two different times because I got it on Blu ray and then the 4Ks came out and I was like, all right, I guess I'll buy the 4K Blu-rays too. I I think I, we, I think I'm we have our answer. Have you ever seen Titanic? 
I actually haven't seen Titanic. What? What the fuck? So it's so long. It, I got. I got. Hey, beautiful. I'll get around to it eventually. I'll get around to it eventually. Uh, um, uh, Gofford in chat show. has the answer. Uh, yes, Ted found the secret phone number for the phone booth that landed him in the Ghostbusters. <laughs> that, that was the Thanks missing link. That would be a great cross. I'd watch. I'd watch Bill and. There you go. Yeah, Bill and Ted Ghostbusters. They, did they do that in the cartoons, like the Bill and Ted cartoon crossover with the real Ghostbusters? Because that would have been like perfect. I, 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 that's, oh. that's that's how that should have gone if it didn't. Yeah, should have. It should have. Somebody needs to yes. do that if it yeah. hasn't been done. Yeah. All right. Question number three. Though he is possibly best known for transforming into a tank or jet, the original Generation One Megatron transformed into a Walther P8, P38, P38. Rather, a type of what? I misspoke. It's written correctly. I misspoke. <laughs> Got it. Once again, question three, though, is possibly known for transforming into a tank or a jet. The original Generation 1 Megatron transformed into a Walther P-38, a type of what? Transformers question for you. Robots nice. in disguise. I think everyone's ready, so let's see your answers. Uh... Pistol is, in fact, exactly what I wrote, but obviously gun is acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Megatron transformed into a gun who could also change size, so a human could hold him or a Transformer could hold him comfortably. Yep. Listen, Gen 1 Transformers uh, was wild stuff. It's wild stuff. <laughs> oh, yes. It's the best. G1 is the best Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to question four. By the power of Grayskull, Prince Adam transforms into He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Created by Mattel's lead designer, Roger Sweet, the company was sued over He-Man's resemblance to what, what much older character? Oh. Oh, my God. I think I have this one. <laughs> Once again, question know. four. <laughs> by the power of Grayskull, Prince Adam transforms into He-Man, most powerful man in the universe, created by Mattel's lead designer, Roger Sweet, the company was sued over He-Man's resemblance to what much older character? My God. Okay. I I have an answer. Same. I, I, yeah. I, I. Again. Again. I yep. think this is this is a gettable one. Let's. Uh, let's I see wrote something down. I wrote something down. <laughs> Three, two, one. Uh. I see one correct answer, and that correct answer is Conan the Barbarian. Yes. Damn it. Conan the Barbarian. Uh, the lawsuit alleges that uh, the Conan movie, which came out in the 80s starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, the, uh, Mattel was contracted to make toys for them, and then they decided not to because the movie was a little bit raunchier, and so they just they turned it into He-Man. Mattel won the lawsuit, so... Um, but uh, but that's that's what the uh, the urban legend say, states, that uh, that Mattel uh, stole, stole Conan to make He-Man. Uh, and then they made a Con uh, He-Man movie with Dolph Lundgren, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was almost That's what the question was about. Great. The question was almost asking for uh, Dolph Lundgren. And then I was like, oh, this was this bit of trivia is even more interesting. I thought yeah. I had yeah, He-Man, yeah, but I don't. I have, I have Prince Adam right I, there. I do have He-Man. In fact, I don't just have He-Man. I loved Prince Adam. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's, he's up there. He's on, uh, he's on I, a Wildcat. Oh, I've got Giant Beast Man. Ah, uh, but that's hot. that's not pre Prince Adam though. Like, yeah, you got you got to have baby got, face got Prince Adam up there. there. Yeah, I've got He Man and King Randor somewhere on this side of the room. I even have like two of the Ghostbusters <laughs> up there. Like, <laughs> like I think Kuan just uh he, he just he just raided my pop collection and decided to start making movies. <laughs> yeah, listen, I right? hope you write an eighties quiz. What do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. What else we got? All, All right. right. Question number five. David Hasselhoff was on top of the world in the 80s, the but his signature work in the decade was as a crime fighter, Michael Knight in Knight Rider, in which he drove a high tech 1982 Pontiac Trans Am called Kit, voiced by which actor whose other best known roles are as a teacher, a heart surgeon, and a founding father? Oh, oh my God. I'll read that again. Oh, as my I always God. Do. <laughs> David Hasselhoff was on top of the world in the 80s. His signature work was as a crime fighter, uh, Michael Knight in Knight Rider. He drove an 82 Pontiac Trans Am called Kit, voiced by which actor, whose other best-known roles are as a teacher, a heart surgeon, and a founding father? 
Oh. Th- this is it, one of those I... things. I, I heard this at one time, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then I completely blew it away because I figured I'm never going to have to answer this during a Kuhan pub quiz. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if, 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 if you want, you can all put your hand up, and I can tell you which founding father. But uh, uh, the only hint I think I can give. I don't know that that would help. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, it I, I'm certain it wouldn't help. Unless it's um, Washington, uh, Hamilton, or John Adams. Like, I don't, if it wasn't in the in the Hamilton musical, I'm not going to have any placements for it. <laughs> well, John Adams wasn't in the Hamilton musical. So. <laughs> See, there, there you go. Well, he was supposed to be. Uh, uh, I wrote uh, something down. I did not. Says, same. Uh, oh, same. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see those answers. Amos, you didn't write anything? Uh, n- no, no, I was too busy with Kuhan's mom. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, William Daniels is the answer. William Daniels, he played Mr. Feeney in Boy Meets World. He played John no, Adams in 1776, no. and he was also uh, in uh, St. Elsewhere. As in, in fact, he was in St. Elsewhere at the same time as he was in Knight Rider, and that's why he's uncredited in Knight Rider, because he oh, was in St. Elsewhere. Oh, God. Wow. There was a 0.0% chance I was going to get that right. So. Fair enough. You know, fair enough. Fair enough. I knew this was going to be a tough yeah. one. If you like, It's kind of like, and if you don't know who William Daniels is off the top of your head, but it, Mr. Feeney. He's Mr. Feeney. Yeah. He's Mr. Yes. For, Mr. for my generation, he's Mr. Feeney. For your generation, he's kid. Yeah. That's, that's, as, that's where as, we're at. as soon as you said Mr. Feeney, <laughs> oh, it clicked in my head, and that's exactly the reference that I'd heard. But I don't know that yeah. I'd ever knew William Daniels. I just knew Mr. I, Feeney. Honestly, if you'd written Mr. Yeah. Feeney, I probably would have taken the answer. I would have been like, you know what? Right. That's fine. This, this is a tough one. In, in a proper quiz, I wouldn't take Mr. Feeney. But in a, in this little bit more casual environment, you know, I'll, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm so kind. glad you're whooping her ass in a casual environment, not the real deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> R- ritual misery is nothing if not casual <laughs> yeah all right maybe maybe uh maybe this one will be a little bit easier uh question number six before he was the james bond of the 90s in the 80s pierce brosnan was a television star playing the title role in which detective procedural oh, for yes. five seasons um oh i oh my god i, I remember i used to watch this with my same. grandparents yes <laughs> yeah uh, once again, for you, James Bond of the 90s, uh, in the 80s, Pierce Brosnan was a television star playing the title role in which detective procedural for five seasons? Yeah. Okay. I got this. I got this. This was uh, this was in the era where you didn't make the transition from TV to film that often, so everyone was like, oh, he's a TV star. He can't be James Bond. And then he was a pretty yeah, good James because Bond. Yeah, because when, when he became James Bond, I referred to him as what I wrote down yeah. for a long time. Aim this. I, uh, I think everyone else is ready. I need you to write something. I have an answer. Is it not not coming to you? No, I and, and, and it's killing me because I know this. But no, go it's ahead. It's not. It's not this. It's not the scarecrow and Mrs. King. All right. Uh, let's <laughs> let's, let's, let's show her answer. It's also not got. murder. She wrote. It is indeed Remington Steel. <sighs> Remington Steel. See, I can, uh, I can my, see uh, the picture in my head. I can, I did. I don't know that I ever knew the name of that damn show. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the character. I mean, kind of. Uh, my uh, my old manager at AMC. Her last name was Teal before she was married, and she said her parents almost named her Remington. They would have named her oh Remington Steel. They were like, we would have called you Remy, but uh, oh, <laughs> that would have oh, been it. <laughs> it's awful. I have a family member that just named their kid Remington, but like for different reasons because they're like you know way far right. So like you know, yeah, yeah. They named mm-hmm. their kid after the guns. So. Yeah, Re- yeah. Re- Remington oh. Colt. You know, they should they should have named the kid Walter Colt. P38. <laughs> yeah, Remington Colt and Walter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, yeah. These are my children, Smith and Wesson. Yeah. <laughs> B. Coford right. says not all gun nuts are right. It's true. Oh, it's true. Dun, yeah. dun, dun, dun. Okay. What else? Do we got? Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, question number seven. Perhaps John Hughes' most important work. The Breakfast Club was selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress in 2016 for its cultural significance. Straight up, 
is the Breakfast Club in the Criterion Collection? Ooh. It's just it's a yes or no. So even if you don't know, it's a 50-50 shot, I'm going to guess. Is the Breakfast Club in the Criterion Collection? Even chat's asking the question like, no? Yes? <laughs> I don't know. Yes? No, maybe? I don't, I, don't know, I don't know of any Criterion Collection movies that aren't really bad Woody... Uh, uh, what's his, what the hell Woody's name? Alan? Woody Allen? Allen? Yeah, Woody Allen. Woody Allen? Yeah, if it's not no, a Woody I mean, Allen movie Kevin, that I there's hate, some, there's, there's some, some modern Kevin Smith stuff. There's yeah, some I Kevin think uh, Smith Chasing Amy's in the Criterion there's... Collection. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Clerks is in there. Clerks um, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's so yeah. yeah. This is this is right. definitely yeah. This is a fifty-fifty. Um, it's a yeah. 50-50, but he has one of those that it could really go either way. Ah, I got my answer. All right, let's okay. let's see him. I got uh, two no's and a yes. The answer is, and in fact, I can show you my Criterion no! Collection copy of Breakfast Club. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> the inspiration behind uh, the question. I own it. <laughs> crap. I, I thought for sure the only reason he would ask this is because it's an injustice that it's not. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, one of those, it's one of those tough. Like, it really could have gone either way. I also yep, own... Yep. Um, Oh, what what are the what, I I bought two other Criterion Collection movies when I bought this. Hold on, they're right over here. I I I just watched The Breakfast Club with uh with one of the twins with Amber not too long ago, and it was the first time that I'd recommended a movie, and they watched it, and they were like, "That totally applies today." Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. like it's just uh, the other two I bought were the uh, The Princess Bride and uh, Memories of Murder, uh, one of Bong Joon Ho's movies. Uh, they had a no. they had a sale like, a couple weeks ago, and a friend of mine was like. Uh, he, he goes, he goes, um, uh, Criterion Collection is having a killer sale, but I don't buy physical media. And then he goes, at Kuhan, please buy him so I can uh, live vicariously through you because I am known for buying Blu-rays. I have like 250 Blu-rays on my shelf. So I, so I bought them for him. <laughs> nice. 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 All right. All right. Moving on to question number eight. Grossing over $700 million in its lifetime, E.T. was the highest grossing film of all time. For a span of 10 years, name either the film it overtook or the film which overtook it. Uh, so I uh, accept one of two answers here. Uh, grossing over $700 million uh, in its lifetime, E.T. was the highest grossing film of all time for a span of 10 years. You can give me either the film it overtook or the film that overtook it. I know a later movie that overtook it that came up in the conversation earlier today sure do <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but i don't know what was in between so, um okay i'm just gonna go with this uh how specific do we gotta be because i think i i think i've got this i don't I, you don't i mean there, there is there is no level of specificity that you need okay if you if you okay, like okay. if you're more specific i think you'll be wrong <laughs> so <laughs> okay all right, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. All right, we got answers down. Let's see them. Yes. All right. Oh no, I no, no you're 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 both wrong, but so am I. Uh, the Actually, correct answers that right. I would have accepted are indeed Star Wars yep. and Jurassic, Jurassic yes! Park. Yep. Yes. Jurassic Park. Uh, yes. Okay. Star Wars in nineteen yeah. uh, seventy. Seven is when it came Seven. out. Seventy-eight yep. is when it crossed that mark. Yep. Uh, E.T. Mm. did it in uh, nineteen eighty-three, and then Jurassic Park was the number one film in the year I was born, nineteen ninety-three. So, and then also, all right, all yep. right. biggest film of all time until Titanic, which came out five years later. Right, yeah. and and I was trying to think of the movie in between, and I knew there's one in between, and I couldn't think of it. And then right as you said, okay, everybody, show your answers. I was like, oh, damn it, it's Jurassic Park. Uh, yeah. Titanic, <laughs> Titanic was like December of '97, but it crossed the mark in '98. Yeah, these are these are just uh, facts that yeah. run in my head all the time. This is the way that my brain works. So, <laughs> 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 all right. Question oh. number nine. Originally airing in Japan as Beast King Go Lion, which giant robot anime aired for 72 episodes from 1984 to 85 in the U.S. and has spawned numerous reboots, comic books, and a fan film directed by Alex Albrecht. Question nine again. Originally airing in Japan as Beast King Go Lion, which giant robot anime aired for 72 episodes from 1984 to 85 in the U.S. 
and has spawned numerous reboots, comic books, and a fan film directed by Alex Albrecht. Alexander Jennings Albrecht. That is. I think you could ask any person in our audience on this show, or people that have even heard of this show, <laughs> and they would have more of an idea about anything anime than me. <laughs> so I'm going to write down the oldest anime I can remember and hope it goes for something. You're probably well, right. If you do you that, see, you're probably going to be you right. Could, you, you could be close to right. The thing is, in, in that era of time, especially like in the, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you didn't realize it was anime. It just was another cartoon that looked a little weird. It yep, wasn't yep. really until the, the 90s, 2000s, like, boom of anime, like Dragon Ball and, and um, Sailor Moon and, and those anime that uh, that really ushered the, the distinction between anime and, and uh, it U.S. Used to, animation. We used to call it, before anime came into popular vernacular in the U.S., we used to call it Japanimation. Japanimation, yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank, thank God that changed. <laughs> that was like early on the woke scale. They were like, "Yeah, this is bad. Let's well, let's do something." It else. is Jap. I don't think I don't think it's like it's Japanese animation. It's just a portmanteau of two words. I don't think it's of um, of things that needed to be changed. It's probably lowest on the totem pole. Okay, okay, <laughs> right. it finally popped on my damn head. I finally right. got it. I finally got it. All right, All right. let's Great. see answers. I got Voltron, Voltron. <laughs> Tom, did you write anything down? <laughs> no, the only anime I know is Pokemon, Sailor Moon, and Food Wars. The answer is indeed Voltron. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Defender of the Universe, Voltron. I watched uh, plenty of Voltron as a kid in reruns on Cartoon Network. I also watched a lot of Power Rangers, which people like always said was a ripoff of Voltron, but the Japanese Power Rangers came before Voltron, so it was really mm. the other way around. But yeah. Uh, it, in fact, BK in the chat even said it's literally made of lions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> <sighs> um, all right, the last question of the round. <laughs> last question of the round. One of the seminal video games of the era. Pac-Man almost had what name? Not because of his re resemblance to a piece of sports equipment, but rather from a Japanese <gasps> oh for flapping God. one's mouth open and closed. I know this one. I know this one. I know this one. I know this one. <laughs> Once again, question 10. One of the seminal video games of the era, Pac-Man almost had what name? It's not because of the resemblance to a piece of sports equipment, but rather from a Japanese phrase for flapping one's mouth open and closed. I know this one. Same. I'm surprised I know this one. Well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think everyone who knows this one knows why they know this one. Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. There's a very specific reason why I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised because there's a very one. specific reason why they changed the name. <laughs> there is. There is. All right, we all ready? Yes. Uh, let's yeah. reveal. Oh, oh yeah, let's I reveal. No. Word. Never mind. That's fine. Yeah. That's that's fine. It's fine. Damn it, Kent! Uh, you got it. You got it. I was trying to remember which. Yeah, I, I can't can't give it to Amos. Uh, Puck Man, or I, I'll take Paco Paco. That's totally fine. That is that is the okay. the Japanese word. Yes, we all know because of Scott Pilgrim, uh, yes. which is also a movie that I own. I believe, I believe I I own every Blu-ray release of Scott Pilgrim. I didn't mean I to. I forgot that that was referenced in Scott Pilgrim. Wow. Yeah. Oh my! It's a huge. Reference. I love Scott Pilgrim. I need to watch it again. I've only ever seen it once, and like that's yeah, a failing yeah. on it's, my part. Uh, they re-released the uh, the soundtrack with uh, additional music. Yeah. So they, they re-released the movie in the. Uh, in fact, actually, you know what? That's also right over here. Um, <laughs> he's, he's, he's trying to be Tom Merritt with his just reaching back and grabbing stuff now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! I have the, the deluxe vinyl of Scott Pilgrim. Oh my gosh! Which was nice. released this year, uh, and I, I pre-ordered this like a hundred bucks. <laughs> I I have a problem with buying physical media. No, so uh, what happened with uh, with all the the versions of Scott Pilgrim I own uh, was I bought one and then I couldn't find it. I lost it, and so I I bet on. Um, 
eBay and I bought a steel book of it. And I was like, cool. Like now I have the steel book all good. Uh, and then another, and then I found the original and then another steel book came out that I liked better. So then I bought that steel book. Uh, and then, and then the 4k release came out and I was like, well, I guess I'll get both versions of the 4k release. Cause now I'm like committed. <laughs> so I think I own all but one physical release of Scott Pilgrim just, just because. So I own five different Blu-rays of Scott Pilgrim. So that's my life. Um, I can keep score. <laughs> I probably should have, uh, I think, I think it was Kent. Who yeah. Won? Yeah. I, 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 it's either, it was either Kent. <laughs> yeah. It was either Kent or Kent. I'm hey, not sure. I, I'm going to, I'm going to claim Kent. victory. I'm going to claim victory either way. We can, we can, uh, we can watch the VOD and figure out. If yeah. That's you accurate, can watch but... the VOD. If you're listening on the podcast, you can go back and double check. I'm pretty sure Kent won. I probably should have kept score. That's like, that's like my one job, but that's fine. Yeah. No, that's, that's why Joe should have been here. Joe, exactly. Joe should have been, should have been this, the scorekeeper. The scorekeeper. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. That was that was actually because I'm usually really good at keeping score live during quiz, but uh, uh, because I was always doing all the live production aspects of quiz, basically Joe was doing all of the scorekeeping aspects because it right. was just so much. <laughs> it was just like I was like, okay, let me help with scorekeeping. Oh, you already did pretty much everything. Okay, cool, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Naim, uh, what can we expect during your stream on the New Year's Eve streamathon? That's a great question. We haven't written a single question for it yet, so uh, you can expect. You can expect questions like this in this vein. Maybe we'll go a little easier. Maybe sometimes they might hew a little harder. I actually uh, hew a lot easier than Joe does in writing. Uh, <laughs> if you ever, if you ever noticed during uh, during those quizzes back in the day, uh, which ones were easier and which ones are harder? Usually, it was Joe writing hard science questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, leave it to the scientist to write hard science yeah, questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it was if it was sports that killed you, that was a little bit of both of us. Although Joe usually did hockey. And I usually did everything else, um, but uh, yeah. So uh, we, I mean, it's 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 just like this. This is the format. We'll probably do three rounds of seven, maybe four rounds of seven, depending on what time allows. Uh, we might even do a music round uh, again, depending on what we end up writing. Definitely some current event stuff from the year, uh, and then and then other stuff. Who knows? Who knows? It, it's uh, but if you want to go back and see some of the old Speakeasy Pub quizzes, those are on my YouTube channel at uh, youtubecom Kuhan. If you want to go back and watch them to to prepare for what the style is but it's uh, the style is basically like we just did awesome yep. and yeah and of course links in the show notes for all that stuff so yep hell yeah i can't yeah, wait and and follow twist.tv this is pub quiz for whatever we do next is going to be on there we're just not sure what that thing is yet um <laughs> we, we haven't been sure for a couple of months we think it's gonna be some sort of like variety show type thing but we're trying to figure it out and also have time because i just started a new job the show is busy with grad school so it's just sometimes life gets in the way of living you know awesome well thank you for right, uh for right coming on. in and guest uh uh, uh, uh quiz mastering absolutely so, so i can't have a chance to time. win yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all right all right kuhan thanks brother Absolutely. Bye. 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 All right. Um, now, now comes my. Oh, what in the Skype is being such a. Did you break I know, it? it? Did you break Skype? It kicked, it kicked me out earlier, and now my video's off. Yeah. It's. Oh, okay, there it goes. And okay, there. There we, we go. go. All right. There. We're back. We're back. There. In, in We're living back. color. Yes. All right, Do Dominic. Okay, so Amos, you you invited Dominic to the show. Uh, yes. Can we start by by uh, Amos describing uh, how did Dominic come into your uh, sphere of knowledge? That, I mean, I mean that that's a that's a fair question. That that's a fair question. <laughs> so um, I I live on a, a certain area of TikTok that is left-leaning that is very open to new ideas and um i have a certain few people that i follow that are either my personal little thirst corner or they talk about things that are related to that thirst corner um gotcha. okay there, there's there's a couple of uh, a couple porn stars i follow that uh that talk about the industry it's not just them being you know trying to look sexy or whatever else. Uh, mm -hmm. But they talk about the industry and they talk about things related to the industry and some of the, some of the cliches and some of the, the misinformation about it and things like that. 
And yeah. the thing that got me hooked on watching Dominique's uh, TikTok was the fact that it's real. It's raw. And it, it takes things that I don't normally see people talking about, in particular kink, but sometimes it's relationships. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's uh, 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 relationships with your family. It's relationships with other people, relationships with, with you know, partners. Um, taking a lot of that and just being real with it and not trying to hide behind the facade of I'm, I'm facing the public. It was just, it was just real. And there's a few people that I've followed that are, that are along those lines. And it's usually, um, it's usually a mental health thing. Like I follow a few people that are focused on mental health that, uh, they, they don't have any sort of, I don't want to say they don't have any sort of like outreaching, you know, other, other tendrils, but not as much as, uh, as, as Dominic does. Dominic, you're very focused. You have a lot of things that you explore and that you talk about, and you're very honest. And I've, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm lucky enough to see in a lot of your videos when you were kind of going through a, a <laughs> breakdown period before you deleted some of them that were just really, <laughs> really real. And I understand why you took them down, but they were real. Like they were, it was just, here's emotion. Here's how I'm feeling. Here's how I'm perceiving what's going on. And you take it or leave it. I'm trying to think which ones now. Yeah, it, it was, it, it's been a while. Um, yeah. But you also have this thing where you like to try to explore the idea of, of introducing vanillas to kink. And mm -hmm. being a, a person that says it's okay to talk about kink, it's okay to be public with your kink because it's not necessarily who you are it's a part right. of who you are and right. that is why when i saw your live uh, what, last week or a couple weeks ago and i was like I, if i could get if i could get them on the podcast this would be amazing <laughs> to have because ken and i we love talking about things that we're not comfortable with we love talking mm -hmm. about things that other people may not be comfortable with and i mean when it comes down to it Sex is always fun to talk about. So right. even even though, and I fully understand <laughs> that not all kink has to do with sex. What the, right. Yeah, you know, with sex itself. It's but it's all mm -hmm. it's all kind of related to to preferences. D Dominic and, Amos is Amos is, dom Amos is dominating the conversation right now. How yeah. how much <laughs> did, of what he said uh represents what what uh who you are and what you present to the world. Um, I, mean, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty accurate, you know, whenever I blew up. Um, so it all started with this like Snapchat that I had sent to like one of my friends and, um, I was like, this is funny. I want to put it on TikTok. No one's going to see it. <laughs> Two days later, I got 30 K and I was like, hi, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> From zero like, to 30 K. Yeah. Yeah, well, I like I had like a couple of videos like get like a decent amount of viewers, but I was like, oh, two thousand people, like that's no one's watching my shit. And then I saw that I was like, mm -hmm. hello. <laughs> so, so what and was, then I was what was the sub what was the subject matter of that video that hit thirty k? It was kink. I had recently played with a new partner. And I was joking about. It. I was like, oh, he wanted to introduce me to a whole new world, and I was hooked. Um, I said, but I'm also an asshole. And uh, I was about to go down on him. And I was like, is there any technique that you like trying to be all cute? And he was like, yeah. Wait, what can, can I cuss? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And yeah, he, uh, he said, yeah, my cock in your mouth. And I was like, oh, so teeth too? <laughs> and I got in trouble. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So that was the video, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, you're you're kinky, you're a brat." Oh my gosh, that I wish that would happen to me. Bet your throat hurt, like all kinds of shit. And I was like, "Hello, <laughs> hello, thirty thousand, let's go." <laughs> yes, uh, the the second right. video was about uh, me. Okay, the video, like, okay, I was dating this guy. We quarantine happened. That's just what happened. Um, but it was a story time from him that, uh, he spit in my mouth. And I was kind of like, whoa, hi. And people were like, during the pandemic, this is how y'all getting COVID. And I was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure whatever we were doing before the spit was definitely, we were definitely going to get COVID. Yeah. You would have gotten <laughs> COVID sure. already at that point. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like you're walking down the sidewalk and and that occurred. This was <laughs> after uh, close encounters. No, no, that's only happened once. You know, just just once. I only do that once. <laughs> just stop, <laughs> stop by. Yeah. <Down. laughs> <laughs> just a little refresher. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, okay. So so, but, so yeah, I, didn't, I didn't have time to like uh, prepare a persona, so I just put my business out there. Yeah. So you're just you. You're just presenting you. So if we if yeah. we go to your TikTok channel, you you get Dominic, like the real thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Exactly. That's awesome. That's, a, that, that's how I like it. Cause yeah, cause I'm not succeeding all the time, and I don't I don't love that. I don't love to see people like okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna say I don't love to see people succeeding, but like I'm failing. I know everyone else is failing at something too. Just say it. Make a joke. We're, yeah. we're all doing it. Uh, chat right. chat yeah. wants to know uh, what's the difference between a kink and a fetish. Um. Hmm. So a fet is like a I need this in order to come, or like a, like a foot fetish. Like oh, I have to have this. I have to have this. Whereas a kink is a desire, a fantasy. Um, you don't hmm. necessarily okay. need certain things. Okay. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Um, I never, yeah, I honestly have never known the difference between the two. That's, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. This, this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one is surprised. This, this is the, this is the only fet, this is the only fet that I have. <laughs> Um, Bubble Fett. The, the I have a, I have a yeah, friend yeah. who's like super <laughs> into Star Wars. John hates fun, and so he'd be like, "I don't, I don't know, I don't know where he is on like Bubble Fett." Honestly, uh, I, 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 I'm afraid that Boba Fett's going too mainstream. Like he was my cool bro uh, when when only like six of us liked him, and now he's getting his own TV show. He's blown up. I'm afraid he's mm-hmm. gonna be. Uh, you know, leaving being behind and being's going to go to his head and jeez. You know. um, anyway, anyway. <laughs> now, Dominic, how did you find out that you like how how did how did the lifestyle approach you or did you go seeking it out and like what was the gener- the genesis of of that aspect of your life? Right. So, um when I was like 18, uh one of my friends gave me this book and she's like you got to read it. It's so hot. Fucking 50 shades of gray. And <laughs> and I just remember like reading it and being like, "Katie, this is this is awful." Like this is also they're not even like doing any of that hardcore shit. It's just I I see very very like this is this is the playground. So uh, I was reading on my Nook at the time, and they were like, oh, you like Fifty Shades? Here's Carrie's story. So it went from Fifty Shades of Grey, which is like, oh, handcuffs, and like, oh, oh my god. (laughs) It went from handcuffs and, you know, obsessiveness to actual um, slave auctions, pony shows, 24 uh, dynamics, um, everything. And I was like, oh my god. Um... (laughs) And so I, I had a boyfriend at the time. I was like, hey, you want to start doing some stuff? And we did. And we didn't research anything. We were just like doing what we saw in Pornhub. And uh, yeah, he, he kind of got me into like my branding kink, um, which was always fun. Um, we wait, can doing- I, wait, hold on. Hold on. Can I can I stop you right there? What is branding? <laughs> what is branding kink? So you can either get like uh, branding with like heat or electro. I actually got electro branded uh, uh, a couple months ago. So what it is is they uh, John used a like an, a a wand, like an electro wand, kind of like um, you know how like you go get a facial and they do like those like um, the electrolysis uh, di- direct frequency wands. Mm. And so yeah, so basically what it is, you just sparks along the skin, and it creates a burn um in whatever shape he wanted it to um and whereas now is this burns, a is this a, a is it a temporary thing or yeah. it's okay it, it, it can be permanent he, he you know he let everyone know it can be permanent i mean anything that we do when we're leaving marks uh scarification uh can leave permanent marks um okay. mine Got faded it. so fast i was so mad 
<laughs> uh, but like, yeah. Uh, and then other brands is like, there's hot iron branding. Um, and yes, just like cattle. Um, so my boyfriend at the time would kind of like light his match and just kind of, you know, swirl it to where the flame kept heating up the metal and then just. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's basically what I was, what I was thinking, but I was like, I didn't know that there was a temporary version of that. I thought any mm-hmm. branding would be permanent. So. Right. Well, it depends on like how hot, how kind of like, it depends on how, how deep are you willing to go? Cause everything that we do can be like, you know, the fire lessened a little bit, like, you know, Oh, you like impact. You can, you don't have to go so hard with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And this is, and, and this is for arousal, right? Like this is, um, a lot of times it can be for arousal. It could be for a release. Um, it basically, you know, you're going into a scene and whatever kind of like, if you want, if you want, if you want to be fearful, like there's psychological fear play. If you want to be aroused, if you want to release like a stress release um, or, you know, purely sexual, purely sensual, like, you know, it doesn't, it's not always like arousal, but it does, you know, tickle that little inner part of you that we don't talk about <laughs> right which, right yeah which is i think that's why i kind of talk about it a lot and i try to normalize it because there's so many things and, i mean and it doesn't even have to be kink but like um there's a lot of in society where we're not asking for what we really want and we should be because i mean if we're not getting what we want then what are we doing here Mm. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now, Kent, of the two of us, I don't think it's any secret that you are the more vanilla of uh, of the Absolutely. Two. So I, I didn't. So I didn't post this anywhere, but I did. I did take the little the little quiz. Uh, I was gonna say you didn't even take the. I put the quiz in the Discord, and like everybody yeah. took it but you. Like the- <laughs> I so I I took it. I took it like twenty minutes before we went live, um, and I and I copied and pasted my results to to a notepad thing and uh yeah i got 70 so my second item was 73 percent vanilla hmm. nice. so yeah i think that's, that's <laughs> i think i'm pretty pretty vanilla do you want to take a guess though my 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 number one thing was at 78 percent. do you want to take a guess what that one was i i think i know what it was but i'll, I'll let dominic see if if they can figure it out monogamist no, oh no. god no 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 no, no. no. <laughs> okay <laughs> but, uh, let's see it, okay so it was vanilla yeah it, it's damn near as vanilla as vanilla yeah. um switch <laughs> was switch was the number one. Oh, I, okay. I was gonna say voyeur so, yeah yeah no voyeur is uh that's that's fairly low on the list well eh, it's higher than half uh at 53 <laughs> percent yeah. <laughs> so, and, but uh, anyway, got, yeah. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm lawyer and exhibitionist. Uh, that yeah. I mean that makes sense. You you have a TikTok channel talking about taboo subjects. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of exhibi- exhibitionism just on oh, display yeah. because it exists. <laughs> right. Ex- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So uh, my top two. I'll I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, my top one was ninety six percent. Voyeur. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And 93% switch with uh 78 experimentalist and then submissive brat non monogamous and then vanilla at 57. So it's it's like yeah. oh, it's like my okay. eighth one down. Yeah. Um okay. so we yeah, had I we got, had several uh... people in our chat uh share theirs and I really appreciate all of you opening it up a little bit and and sharing it. Some of them were not what I thought that person would have had. I'm not going to call anybody out, but you know, it's all in our Discord. I, um, it's pretty yeah. interesting. My biggest, my biggest surprise wasn't any of the results. It was the fact that one particular person actually participated and and posted the results. That, that was my biggest surprise. I, yeah, I wasn't going to call anybody <laughs> by name, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a that was a surprise. So. Yeah, it's always and it's always yeah. good. Like if you know you're participating or you're maybe researching to like keep kind of retaking the quiz and get into the in depth one, because uh, like mine mine has changed in my kink journey. Like you know, yeah, I 
I get a lot more voyeur, which is like, you know, getting arousal by watching people. Um, I get switched now, which is I, you know, alternate between bottom and top. Um, and um, is is and that a recent a of... is that a recent like transition that you've that you found the the switch? Because when I first started watching your channel, you were all bottom. I was all bottom. Yes. All bottom. Yes. Yes. Very, very recent. Um, well, I mean, not too recent. I've always known it was there. But uh, yeah, um, I'm also like a sadist, but I'm also a masochist. Um, sadist enjoys um, giving the pain and uh, the masochist receives the pain. Uh, and they both derive pleasure from the roles that they play. Um, which is funny. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if they have it on there anymore. I have to take that quiz again but um so me and my uh one of my good friends jazzy um we talk about this sometimes so there's a lot of people they're like oh i don't you know if i'm a bottom then i'm a sub if i'm a top i'm a dom you don't have to be some people they're like i'm a top i'm a top that's it i'm a top i don't want to so a top is just a person who tops the scene and a dom is someone who assumes responsibility over aspects of someone's life that they've consented to, uh, whereas a bottom just receives whatever it is, and a missive actually gives their submission to a dom. Um, so it goes. Well, into... So it re relinquishes responsibility is mm -hmm. is what you yeah. mean. Okay. Re responsibility, power. I think uh, DNS would be more on the uh, power exchange side. Okay. Okay. And when you say scene, it's in my in my mind, I imagine it as in um, you you have a defined start, you have a defined mm -hmm. end, you yes. preferably predefined end, mm -hmm. um, and then during that time is when you're taking the role, and it could be either a hard start, hard stop, or it could be more of a soft thing, such as you know. These, this is the scene we're in, but we're still going to continue and you're still going to wear your, your, your collar or mm -hmm. things like that. And it's more like a soft end. Is that, is that accurate? Yes. So a scene is just any pre-negotiated uh, location, time, uh, session, act uh, that kink is uh, happening in. You do negotiations and then it doesn't matter like whether you say, okay, we're going to go ahead and start the scene now or when the music starts, etc. Um, and of course, the ending either ends with someone calling red or it just ends whenever both of them are just too tired to carry on. Or it's just we both have kind of had enough. Or um, or when you when you come. Right. I mean, that's a potential. If you do. If you like, do. Fine. Right. 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 If, like, I mean, if, if that's, if that's, yeah, that's, that's the goal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, then again, so, there is like force orgasm. So one time, 17. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Okay. Know, I don't know that Kent can yeah. handle more than like, you know, a low, a no, like a <laughs> well, single I... digit. You can start getting Kent into the double digits, and he might start rethinking life. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, hell, you get you, you get above singular, and it, it, it gets a little like, whoa. And yeah, we're uh, old. So, we're so old. Do, we're lucky I to just, have the one. <laughs> I do just want to clarify, though. Like, scene and play are those this like? Are those interchangeable terms, or is it? Are like, they completely uh, different, or is it just uh, depends on the context? Or uh, can, so can you help I'm, us like really understand what like where play the word play? Yes. Um, okay. So um, play is kind of like oh, we're going to go play in that scene. Uh, this is my play partner, um, pet play. Whereas you know a pet will play within a scene. Uh, play partners will have scenes um, like that. So the the play is the act uh, versus the scene is like the location or the setting. Uh, I got it. Okay, that or makes the sense. Activity. Yeah. Got and it. Okay. Okay. I, I, one of the big things that I, I don't want to I'm going to mention this here, even though it doesn't really fit, but I want to mention it because I I feel it's really important. Is something that I, I learned from from watching your TikToks early on is there should be a recovery period after any sort of heavy scene. Aftercare, absolutely. And even in uh, light scenes, uh, we've actually talked about, like, aftercare, even with vanilla acts. 
um, kind of incorporating different things um, into like, you know, vanilla relationships. Um, so yeah, it doesn't matter what the scene is. Like I, I had a hypno scene one time and we still, there was still aftercare because within these scenes, you are not, you know, um, sometimes you're not yourself. Sometimes it, it, whatever is happening, the aftercare is the portion where you and the other partner, whether you are intimate or platonic, it's just bringing that humanness and intimacy and kind of reassurance back to not only yourselves, but to your, to your, the person you're playing, you're playing with. Can, can you, can you, can you be a little more specific? Like d- d- describe to me. So like a scene just took place, like you just finished. Right. Mm-hmm. So can you describe to me like more specifically, what does aftercare consist of? Like what, what is that? Okay, what can I so- expect? If, 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 we, like if, if Amos and I just did a scene together and I'm expecting aftercare, what is Amos going <laughs> to do for me? Like what, what, are, what, are, what, are, what are we looking at here? It's all about what you kind of want. Um, do you do you like to be cuddled? Do you like a blanket? Do you like maybe a water or hot tea? Uh, maybe some food. A lot of people choose candy because like the sugar helps you with that drop. Um, okay. Do you want to talk about this? Do you want a way to talk about this? Um, that's basically what aftercare is. It's just kind of, or do you want to watch a cartoon, a movie, just to kind of like settle down? Mm. So yeah. A lot of okay, so it's people... it, a lot of it. I, I feel like a lot of this is like paying attention to the needs of the partner, right? Mm-hmm. So, whatever it is that they need, yeah, a cigarette, a cigarette might be, yeah, doctor care. Yes, um, exactly. A lot of people just kind of immediately, kind of like, um, the baseline is like the cuddles, the blanket, the water. Got you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because okay. the, the the base, I mean, the 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 scene could be, I'm going to treat you like absolute garbage for an hour, um, exactly. You know, and and, not, and I'm going to completely dehumanize you for an hour because that's what we've agreed, that's what I want to mm-hmm. do, and that's what you want done. So at the end of that, there needs to be a period of time where it's like, that was the scene, that's over. Yes. We are humans on the same level again, and I'm not just going to leave you in a position where you still feel demeaned and demoralized and it, like, like a pile of shit. Exactly. So, so I, like the bottom will receive like, Oh, you did really well, et cetera, et cetera. Or just kind of like those touches. And then the top also needs reassurance. Like I really like what you did there, you know, because, you know, we always say like aftercare for tops doms is pretty not talked about. And they're the ones that hold a lot of the responsibility of the scene to go well and for it to be received well. And it's like a dungeon master, like in Dungeons and Dragons. Like the, the DM doesn't usually get love. Like it's like, right. oh, the DM, <laughs> yeah. is, the DM sucked. Like my character didn't level up this time and I'm mad. Oh, fine. We have uh, dungeon masters too. They're just. I know. <laughs> they're no. different uh, things. Uh, now, could you, all right. Could, you you the, mentioned. The chat had a. Go ahead, go well, ahead, hold Jay. on, hold on, hold on. The chat had a question, uh, and I had the same question, so I really, I really want uh, to understand this: intimate versus platonic. Could you, mm-hmm. could you elaborate on on that? Okay, um, I kind of so like part, like partners, even romantic. I should have said romantic. Um, so, like um, a lot of the scenes that I've done are between friends. There is no kind of, and even though a lot, sometimes it was sexual, um, there is, there's no like, oh my God, like, I love you. It was like, oh, you know. I, so emotional, um, like I, like I, I'm in love with you. Like that's yes. like what you meant by intimate, right. Versus platonic, like, right. like friends participating in a scene. Um, and then afterwards they're still literally the same thing friends yeah just friends yes and, exactly yeah, yeah okay that makes okay that makes perfect sense to me okay yeah that's what i meant because you can be intimate in uh platonic ways i should have i should have said like romantic versus um, got it okay platonic. that i'm on the same page with you now okay yeah because i mean and, and that helps you define the roles right because you can be in a in a relationship in a romantic relationship with somebody but in a certain scene Things mm-hmm. that you might do, you know, genital touching, things like that, that you might be okay with on a, a romantic, just just a night out, 
are are completely right. off limits because of this scene. You don't want that particular interaction. Yes, so. there are there are some people, and like I myself am one. So um, we call it monogamish. So whereas I might have like a one partner, uh, but I still will kink and play with other people. Um, however, it's not going to be intimate. There's not going to be any kind of like sexual intimacy. There probably, um, if there is genital touching, it will be negotiated with my partner. Like, hey, is this cool with this? With you know, are you cool with me doing this? Probably won't be full on penetrative sex, um, or like you know, genital to genital. But yeah, monogamish is just kind of like um, I'm monogamous, but I'm gonna kink with other people. One of the one of the other things, uh, my beard just tried to come up there. Um, <laughs> apparently, following beer with Mountain Dew not the greatest idea. Just life lessons. Um, yeah. One of the things that you mentioned was a was it a munch, munch, mm-hmm. munch. Okay, what now? In 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 my mind, <laughs> my mind's probably not where you think it is. But in my mind, I think of this. So back in my back in my pagan days. Uh, back in my Wiccan days, especially, we would get say, together. <laughs> we, we we would get together as a group, and there would be certain expectations. You know, uh, you would have typically be over a weekend, and like Friday night would be family night, and then Saturday night would be like the kids would be gone by six, and Skyclad would just magically happen, and certain people might peel off for certain other things and come back later, and and it was kind wait, of wait, wait, hold on, flow. hold on. Did you say skyclad? Skyclad. Skyclad is when you are nude in the purpose of becoming closer to the spiritual side of other people, as opposed to just being naked to show off your stuff. Okay. Uh, all right. So, okay. like, like oh. typically in a in a in a pagan group, you wouldn't have a bunch of people just naked because. They want to see everybody naked, and they want to be naked. It's typically there's there's a spiritual purpose be, behind <laughs> removing the layers of clothing to where you are. You can, uh, anyway. Chat chat wants to make sure chat, that chat. that uh, we define uh, uh, it's we're talking about pagan, not pagan. Yeah, yeah. No. That's uh, what I uh, thought you were saying. I was like, oh, we going we going there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, we talking about pagan. <laughs> oh yeah. damn it! Disappointment. I, 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 this disappointment was had when I realized it was pagan. <laughs> oh, but, but it, then again, I guess like there's there's somebody there's somebody in South Carolina right now that's like, I don't see the difference in what he's saying right there. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> I don't yeah. get it. So so uh, yes, in <laughs> in pagan circles, in in uh, uh, it still didn't sound right. Um, <laughs> but you would have so like, wait, wait, wait so hold on actually it's very important because we're, we're 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 talking a lot of jargon here so i think it's important if we do define terms so amos yes. when you say pagan uh what what does that mean that means uh non-traditional spirituality in a sense that does not uh, align itself with more traditional uh, 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 religions such as Christianity, Judaism, uh, uh, Islam, things like that. It's more of a nature-based yeah. or so, a right. natural so like, w- world-based religion. Wiccan might be Wiccan might be an example of a uh, pagan religion. Yes, uh, w- Wicca is a pagan religion. So is Druidism and um, several others that yeah. aren't coming to mind okay. right now. But got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, when so you were talking about. Uh, so yeah. you'd have a bunch of druids in a field, and you know there'd be a family-ish night where the kids were, uh, you know, it was, it was all family oriented, and then the next night would be a l- no kids, and certain events may happen, such as being skyclad and celebrating things and dancing around fires naked. naked. Skyclad naked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But naked with a purpose, though. It's it's not just naked. It's naked with. A purpose. I mean, I always have a purpose if I don't have my. <laughs> I, I don't. Sometimes I'm just randomly naked. It's it's a fucking miracle. It has not happened on this podcast. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. By the way, thank you. Twitch terms of service. Uh, <laughs> but five thousand followers oh and uh, five thousand subscribers, and we'll have an OnlyFans, and uh, we will be dad bod. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll, have our, dad we'll have our dad bods Skyclad. out there. Cutting the grass. It's going to be dad bod yard work on the on our OnlyFans. 
five thousand yeah, subscribers. That's, a, that's, Let's go. that's worthy of a title suggestion right there. <laughs> Dad, oh god damn it, Curtis beat me to it. Yes, Dad bought Sky Club. Thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah. so munches. Yes. So a munch is kind of like a vanilla activity or um, setting and uh, where kinky people just get to connect. Um, a lot of times it is coffee. Sometimes it's dinner. Um, and we usually go to like different restaurants, maybe a coffee shop. Um, I know a couple of people that I am friends with. They're like, oh, I'm going to this munch. It's at a bar. And it's just kind of like where you go into a, in a public setting and you make connections. Um, with kinky people, um, the conversation usually isn't even about kink. It's just making friends, hanging out with people um, in a general setting. Um, a lot of times, um, groups will use munches to vet you. So you have to have requirements of like how many social um, events you can you attend before you can even go to the dungeon, go to the play parties. Gotcha. So uh, uh, the way I the way I'm hearing this is munch is a uh, basically a, a, a kink vernacular for just hanging out like normal a meetup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just but also just with, with but with with the pos- but with the possible motive of vetting and and things like that. Yeah. Now yes. is the vetting is the vetting piece a required uh, a component to be for it to be considered a munch or is that just like a thing that might be part of it? Okay. No, it's just uh, because play parties are a different vibe and a different setting. And sometimes you just want to be normal or not normal. Uh, Sometimes you just want to be relaxed, casual, whatever, Mm. and not be like, you know, here I am in full leather, ready to take your ass down. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not a convention, like a, like a BDSM convention or something. Yeah. 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 Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, uh, Cofred in the chat one said, uh, uh, I'm not even interested in the dungeon. I just want to go there to hang out with people I think I would like. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's, I mean, yeah, that sounds good to me. Like, I, I can yeah. party with some folks. Play parties are fun. I mean, there's music going. Whenever I went, we were just kind of all hanging out. Um, there's like a kitchen where you know, potluck is being served. Um, where I go, there's like different, you know, you you watch, um, and so just hanging out, watching scenes. Uh, there's a social area where you can relax, mm-hmm. color. Uh, there's a smoking patio, all all kinds of stuff you're saying, going you're on. You're saying watching scenes, so this is mostly like, um, uh, like like for expi- expi- yeah, excuse me, exhibitionism, voyeurism type yes. of uh, thing. Okay. Yes, that is uh. That is a big part of play parties is, you know, you're going out. Not only do you get to play with other people, but you get to like, you know, if you are an exhibitionist, uh, you get to show it off. And if you're Mm. a lawyer, you get to watch. Um, And also for like new people in the scene, the voyeurism is really great because you're like, okay, um, I don't know what I like. Oh, I like what he did there. Oh, I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that at all. Or like, oh, he's a cool top. I don't know if I'd play with him. So yeah, yeah, so even if you're not necessarily into voyeurism, mm-hmm. the the idea is like you know, it'd be like watching a YouTube video, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's Kinda it's like I'm learning, shopping. yeah, I'm learning something here. I'm I'm figuring out what I might like, maybe what I don't like. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. That's, okay. That that that. So just a view into my life. That sounds like the kind of party that I would love to go to. Um, right. Because again, Voyeur was like one of my top <laughs> yes. requirements. Like, I would, it, it just seems like that'd be a great time. And, and it would certainly set the mood right for the rest of the night to go out drinking and having a good time at a party or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just well, saying. You know, even though that didn't, even though Voyeurism didn't top my list, I think that that would fit my personality quite a bit. Because whenever I'm in a situation where I'm not 100% comfortable or feel like I'm in charge of my own destiny or whatever, yeah. I very much become a wallflower. I'm a watcher, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I, I guess I, I look for my opportunity to make myself known. Uh, but until that, opportunity 
presents itself, like I, I tend to stay in the background. Uh, yeah. So like amongst my friends, like if I'm in a small group setting with a bunch of friends, I tend to be like pretty outgoing. I, I want to be the guy making the best joke and, you know, being the loudest or whatever. Right. But if, when, if, when I'm, when, whenever I'm with like people that where my not friends outnumber my friends, yeah. I'm absolutely in the background. Like I'm the backseat, like just trying to figure out where do I fit in here? Stuff like yeah. that. So I think <laughs> if I went to one of these, uh, what did we call it? A munch? No, is that what it's called? no, this is a play party. Or play well, yeah. Either way, either way, I think yeah. I would be kind of just sitting back. I would probably take on the voyeur role just by default. Mm -hmm. um, this sounds yeah. to me like just one more thing that I'd go to, have a great time, and then bounce the second I didn't feel like being there anymore because that's what I do. That's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. exact. That's exactly that, what I did. The old uh, Irish goodbye. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my play party uh, last weekend. Like I. Uh, I ended up not playing with anyone, which was like totally fine. Um, but I got to watch a bunch of scenes and I was like, okay, for the next play party, I've got like who I want to like approach in mind. Um, Cause there's like different things going on. Um, and, and a lot of times at these events. Um, so it's pretty, a lot of times when we're like talking about practicing safe kink, you know, of course, um, which is, rack prick all that good stuff um wait, wait wait hold on could you define what you just said okay so i don't know all the terms for prick but rack is risk aware consensual kink okay um but and also uh ssc is a uh, safe saying consensual um so yeah risk aware is basically like you're aware of the risk that you're doing uh consensual kink um, I hope that's right. Okay. <laughs> so with, with everything that we're doing, there is inherent risks, but, um, you don't want to add to those risks by doing unsafe things. So drinking is absolutely not allowed in a lot of these mm. like kink, uh, centered spaces. Now, if it's more like, you know, a swingers club, they do focus on, they, there's a bar there. Um, where I go, there is no drinking on the grounds, period, whatsoever. You, you, if you show up drunk, uh, you won't be playing with anyone. That's, that's for darn sure. And a lot mm -hmm. of, like, it's a requirement for me, do not drink before we sing. I will not be drinking. I want to feel my pain. Uh, you better not be drinking, period. And you better not be on anything, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just because you want to be in the proper state of mind. I was going to say, it right. seems like it would... It would if if you if you're if your mind altered in the first place it doesn't seem like you'd be able to get the full benefit or accept the full risk of yes what you're doing anyway so it'd be like being really drunk and then smoking a joint like what, what yeah. the fuck you doing man like yes yeah. yes and a lot of people and i think it goes that. without saying the the issues of consent and um uh being responsible for the the actions that you take and so on and so forth yeah uh real quick uh jazzy in the chat um throwing a bunch of links in there and helping to find some stuff thank you so yes, much thank you thank you jazzy <laughs> ja jazzy's I'm, uh... like, I'm like i'm like looking at my phone because like she sent me something earlier yeah. that, that so that's my friend uh she is jazzy the sub um on instagram jazzy on tiktok uh quirky kinkster i love her I, that's one of my best friends and um i was like waiting for her to pop up and be like this is the acronym <laughs> but yeah 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 she's uh i i only know her because of being on your lives you know watching your lives she's mm -hmm. always there and uh yeah she I don't know if she realized it, but her and I often t tag team on the next subject I would like to talk to you about, and that's putting down the shitty haters in your lives. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you are one of those people. Um, I screenshotted it finally. I was like, God, yeah, bitch. I, I just, I, I can't uh, like, why, why waste people's time by being in a TikTok and just harassing people about stupid shit. It just makes no, no, no sense. Um, it makes no sense. You've you've uh, you've come out a few times as very uh, I don't say discriminatory isn't the right word. It would be uh, very vocal about people who 
hold others to a higher standard than what should be expected and try to hold people to cultural expectations on how they, you know, their appearance or even um, yeah. uh, uh, misogyny, things like that. Um, and, and it's weird to me because I, a lot of, I'd say probably most of my TikTok is just that it's people calling other people out on stupid bullshit. Um, yeah. But when you do it, it's almost, it almost seems like it's personal every time. Like you really, you're like, this is, this is fucking dumb and you're a piece of trash and you just need to, <laughs> you, you, you need to find a way to exit the, the, my sphere without, you know, unaliving yourself. Go, go be alive somewhere else. <laughs> You know, um, yes, I, yeah, I, I don't hold space for that kind of stuff. Um, if I wanted to be humiliated and shamed, I will negotiate a fucking scene for that. Like, don't do, mm. don't do shit to that. And then also it's always, I don't, I, I noticed this and it's like from the very, very beginning of my TikTok journey, I have never gotten a hate comment from a woman point blank period. I have, or, or a vagina haver. Um, <laughs> never, I have never ever gotten a hate comment from a you know a vagina holder. It is always from men, and I'm like, mm. are you like good, bro? Like, are y'all <laughs> okay? Like, I I don't understand. Mm -hmm. You came on to my TikTok, you watched it, you are now commenting, which is boosting me. Thanks, but you're doing it to like be rude i'm like Ugh. if i'm not your cup of tea like why are you sitting here drinking it <laughs> right yeah i've never yeah i've never understood like the idea of hate watching like what's the what's the point like what yes you, what, how is that fulfilling i i've never understood that i like yeah, the quote so that's why i take it i don't know who personally. said it first of course but the quote of uh, of uh, and the most recent was gary v is like if if someone is in your comments spending the time to put you down or to talk shit about you, where the fuck are they at in life that that's the best optimal thing they could be doing right now? Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. we have so many other things to be doing. And, like, I think that's why I'm like, you're exerting your energy yeah. to be mean. Yeah, Cur yeah, Curtis says they're a fan. Yeah, I, and I think so. Like, it's not a good fan. It's a toxic fan. But <laughs> no. They're there watching you. They're experiencing you. When they could be doing something that they actually enjoy, they instead choose to be offended or, or pissed off by whatever it is that you're presenting. And, yeah, I call that fandom. <laughs> well, the, the the one the other night uh, the, on your live was talking about uh, – said something about your body. Like, I, I, I didn't even catch the original comment. And I was sitting there the entire time like, I don't get it. Like, what's their problem with their, with, with their body? Like, I don't – I mean, you're 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 an anonymous name that's just showing text. In, in I know a, it, like, it but, kicked me out. It did. Skype hates you. Skype. It well. hates me so bad. <laughs> Eventually, the other the, like because that's what happened last time. The other thing just kind of like left. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, um, but but yeah, that. no. Uh, it's definitely it's definitely fan behavior i've gotten and i've gotten like some mean things before i was like <laughs> i i just don't i don't yeah. understand it i don't no doubt well i mean especially when you're when you're a 30k a 30k per view uh type person i mean you're gonna get <laughs> you're gonna get like a, a small percentage uh of uh assholes you know, negative negative nancy's or yeah assholes yeah uh, um, oh, yeah, and that's gonna sure. and and they're the they're the ones that are gonna be the loudest because that's I mean, it's just their way. Most of, most of the people, yeah, most of the people that are enjoying your content are either just going to enjoy it in silence, or mm -hmm. they're going to put a like or uh, you know a thumbs Kent, up or Kent whatever. Kent doesn't TikTok a lot, so he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he, Usually, well, like... but I'm saying any any social media where you can comment, right? Yeah. The yes. people that are enjoying it, you're either going to not comment or they're going to say something, in most cases, are going to say something very, uh, uh, you know, like, hey, cool video, you know, or something like that. Where yeah. the people that are just, just fucking pissed off, like, yes. they're the ones that, that are going to type paragraphs and do it often. And, and like, so they're going to be loud, like, right? So, 
and a lot of them aren't even there. I don't even think they're pissed off. I, if they are, don't know what it's at. Don't know if it's me. But like, yeah. I think la- last night I got this. Uh, I got a couple of weird comments. The first one was like, "Yes, plus size king," and I was like, "Thanks." I and they're like, "Oh, I thought you were trans," and I was like, "Uh, I fall under the trans umbrella." Is is that what you're asking me? And they never commented again because I was kind of like. Because <laughs> the jo- the yeah. joke becomes less funny if uh, if you ask to explain it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then the second yeah. guy, which I screenshotted, was like plus size queen. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... Which it's like uh, people. Or um, usually, like the the comments about like my body, um, which I'm always like, you're literally commenting on something that I have to live in every single fucking day. Um, no one talks about you. You're fucking short, balding. You know, you're resting <laughs> personality on two. No one talks about that. Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but like you know. Uh, well, people feel like a certain level of ownership, I think, uh, of the the content that they view, right? So, yes. it whether it's YouTube or TikTok or whatever, uh, it's it's just the same as if I'm watching Star Trek or something on TV or Friends or whatever. You you feel like you have earned the license to say whatever the fuck you want to because they're a yes. celebrity, they're a public figure, so I can say whatever I want. Uh, and, and I think just human society hasn't adapted to the fact where, uh, social media and like social video content and Mm -hmm. so forth is actually reaching directly to a human and not like the random, you know, or, oh, I wrote to the fan club of, of this person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I don't, I don't think we as humans have quite figured that out. And and understand mm-hmm. the you know the empathy that's required when you're talking to an actual fucking person. <laughs> yes, For, I'm like I'm, I'm I'm still like it's still like um I got this message one time by this guy and he was like he had like I get DMs message requests constantly from you know just of course <laughs> imagine that. yeah it's always the strangest mm-hmm. things um. But he was like, he had said, hey, 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 you know, just over a period of weeks. And finally he's like, hey, you want to fuck? And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why I did this whole thing. The, the, yeah. This whole thing was so that I could fuck you. Like, this is, yeah, <laughs> yes. And I was like, I'm sitting there reading it. I was like, you know what? I, 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 I've got time today. So I was like, why would you think that was even remotely this like okay to say to me he goes oh i was just joking i didn't think you'd actually respond i don't think i didn't think you'd read them i said it goes to my phone of course i'm fucking reading it and he's like well you know i i subscribe to your only fans i said do you what's your name because you don't anymore (laughs) Um, i don't need your money asshole (laughs) i don't i don't want it period um yeah yeah, like these people they don't think that i read my messages i read them i read them Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. A, a a testament to your willingness to read things was when I found you on a live, and I finally I I knew that you did lives because I'd see oh Dominic's live has ended. I'm like fuck, man! Like it's been like six or eight months that I've been watching this lady on TikTok, and she, but and I, I I then found out it's because you go live for like five minutes and you're like fuck this bar and you go to a different bar and do another live. I No, I get it now. I, it, it's not, it's not personal. You didn't like, hey, Oh, Ethan Kane is signed on. I better stop my live now. You know, I, 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 I get it. I'm, <laughs> um, that's what I do. That's yeah. why I react. Yeah. That, that's no, why Ken's no. not on TikTok Cause he's got like a list of 500 videos that I've sent him that he's not, he's like, I'm not touching any of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got, I've gone live before and like either like a cousin or like, uh, just someone that I know from like my past has popped up and I'm like, Oh God, someone's in here. You guys, I'm nervous now. I, now, I make it very, you known. did say that you recently got spotted and recognized. How did, uh, Oh so yes, we awkward. need that. Yes. We need that, that so story. Yes. Okay. So I'm sitting there at this play party, real nervous because you know, I am social anxiety. 
um, in person. And so we were all talking about like, oh, what's the biggest or most intensive kind of uh, kink thing that you've done? And people were talking about, oh, the Halloween party or this and the other. And I was like, oh, so I went to an event where it was like 20 plus of us uh, at this one house. We flew in from all over. Um, and I didn't say what the name was because, of course, like, I don't want people at my, like, l- real life group dungeon to know that, like, I'm on TikTok like this. <laughs> Just because, like, t- kink talkers yep. and TikTokers get such a bad name. And I'm like, nope, I'm an adult. I am mm. an adult. I'm an adult. <laughs> and so... <laughs> He was like, oh, yeah, so I actually watch a lot of TikTok, and there was this, like, group of kinky people recently, and they went to this big, like, gathering, and I was like, oh, yeah, and I'm, like, so shaking, and he's like, yeah, like, I think um, it's, like, a camp out, and I said, is it the kink talk camp out, and he goes, yep, I said, that was, um, hey, he goes, oh, I knew it, I saw you in the videos, and I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was me. He goes, oh my God, I can't believe like you were there. Like you're yeah, you're big. I'm like Yeah, no, shut up, no, shut no, up, not. don't <laughs> this one the, the the person next to me was like, Oh, we have we've got a star here. I'm like, No, <laughs> no, don't call me a star. Please oh, don't call man. me a star. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and then of course he kind of um would revisit that every so often he was like I still can't believe that was you. I, I figure like I recognize you. And I'm like. I stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please stop telling people that I'm on TikTok. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Like, yes. So sp- Dominic, speaking of your TikTok, what, what is your TikTok channel? Uh, where can people find you? Dominic John underscore underscore. Um, it's spelled just like the regular Dominic John. Um, yeah, it's, that's me. It's real weird. And, <laughs> and, how, and if they want to, by awesome. chance, find you in a bar, uh, don't just <laughs> fucking don't. just you, don't. Yeah. You, just don't. You, don't. you can catch in the bar yeah. all the time. It's called TikTok. You just hop on TikTok and follow her yeah. and Do- or follow and, them and, 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 and it'll be there. Like <laughs> they'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. yeah um uh, <laughs> all right so for, for, you are welcome to hang out i don't we don't want to monopolize your entire evening because like you have life uh right. however if you do want to hang out for a little bit more we're going to go ahead and do, wrap up the show then probably read a bunch of stuff in, in chat that we didn't catch during the show because holy yep. shit have they been lighting it up tonight so oh yeah absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes Le- nice. Leave it to the, the kink to bring out um, uh, the audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, yes, it, yeah. it does. It does. Uh, we uh, we we have a show. We're going to be doing a show here in about two weeks, I think. Kent, two or three weeks. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, we're going to talk soon. about Artemis. Artemis. We're, we're going to talk about Artemis, the the, the uh, space program Artemis, back to the moon. Uh, that's going to be the focus of our our conversation. We're going to talk about a, you know other stuff as well, but that's going to be the yep. the nerdy focus of it. Uh, but a couple weeks after that, we're going to have Richard Gunther on for our, our annual tradition of, of the year in review just before we do the New Year's Eve streamathon. Yep. And that's what I really want to direct people to. If you are not already, I need you to go to twitch.tv slash DC streamathon. Give that channel a follow so that you know when the streamathon starts. And also, you can go in there and look at the schedule. Uh, the schedule is full 27 hours of content. Is already scheduled for you guys. It's going to be absolutely yep. amazing. Uh, go check it out. Um, I can't wait to see you there. Amos, where, where are you at on the internet, bro? Uh, I've been directing everybody to anthonylemos.com. Go there, see my art, read my comments, and you can find all my socials there. So anthonylemos.com. You'll know it's me because it's all black and white because I don't like decorating. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How about you, um, I, First. Personally, I, I want to direct people to our Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Uh, that's about the only place I hang out anymore these days. I've kind of uh, therapeutically removed myself from social media for about the last half year or so. Uh, so don't be looking for any new tweets from me for a while. I'm not saying I'm done with it forever, but for now, that's what I need. Uh, but if you want to engage with me, uh, I've been doing it over at Discord, uh, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. 
And of course, you can find Dominic on TikTok, and that link will be in all the show notes and all the other things. So uh, I'm not going to try because there's, there's like underscores, and there's it's like there's Do- well, Dominic John underscore underscore, but, it, but it's yeah. but it's like Dominic yeah. underscore John underscore underscore, and then you put like a little squirrely, and then you draw a smiley face on your phone. <laughs> And then you then you tap three times, knock the back of it, twist it around upside down, like. I, I didn't grab my username yeah. in time. I, I, yeah, well, I didn't either because my username is Ethan Kane seventy seven. So I didn't. Even, I, I had to pull a kid. Yeah, well, it's you're like my yeah my 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 Twitter my Twitter it has underscores in it as well. So I get it. Yeah. I get. I feel the pain. Yeah. Uh, if you want to. If you, <laughs> damn it, I lost my place in the in the thing here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, find out everything we've got going on at Ritual Misery, uh, over at RitualMisery.com. Yep. Um, now is about the time where we would tell you thank you for uh, listening and for enjoying our show. Go go catch some of Kevin McLeod's music. The entire internet uses his music for everything. Uh, yep. We actually Incompetech.com. Yeah, we actually paid him the royalty fee to play his music on our podcast. So it makes us better than most of you. Yeah. We're, um, we're, 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 better than you. we're, we're $25 <laughs> better, better than you. Than <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Kevin uh, but, McLeod, you but you don't have to, Kevin offers his music, uh, royalty free. Yeah. Uh, as long as you, as long as you share we a like, it. And, uh, and we, so, and we do both. We yeah, tribute absolutely. and we, uh, we paid for the licensing. So go do that. Uh, for me, for you, for Dominic, for all of TikTok and all them fucking haters that just need to go away, this has been your <laughs> Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y